Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex. I'm here to talk about another pretty successful team uh, in this last winter round of regionals. This is a top eight Virginia regional finish team by Wolfie Glick. Wolfie, if you don't know, um, he finished, he won nationals twice in a row and uh, he got runner up 2012 worlds. So he's a really strong player. Uh, Virginia was a really big regional on top of that. They actually extended the top cut to 16. So, um, top eight at such a big regional that's a that's a pretty good team that's a pretty consistent solid team so um i do also want to mention i, I got the team off of his blog eggyemporium.blogspot.com they got a lot of cool vgc information check them out when you get a chance so first up let's take a quick look at the team uh what you can see here you have uh some pretty you have some pretty interesting choices here uh vaporeon mr mime and mega lucario not seen a whole ton also at this time, Special Tyranitar wasn't played a lot in America, and that is a Special Tyranitar. So um, we're already looking at a pretty interesting team here. I know when I was sitting at Virginia, we were talking about Wolfie's team, and like we were just like, what the hell is this Vaporeon doing? What was Mr. Mime doing? So he's pretty innovative in his team choices, and I think that really pays off for him in the long run. Um, so Salamence, we're going to start with it. Similar to Ray's team you know almost similar to everyone's team intimidate in such a physically based metagame is really important um salamence is so good because he's got so many resistances can switch into a lot um and he's got really strong he's really fast really strong stab dragon this is a typical choice scarf salamence a lot of them out there are scarfed it is modest though so do note that um he's running draco meteor dragon pulse flamethrower and rock slide as opposed to um rays which was running hydro pump so that's that's something to look out for. Uh, he did put Rock Slide on for Talonflame and Charizard. And um, also there's a nice flinch chance, you know, 30% chance of flinch. If you're going first, you know, that that's a huge, that's a really scary thing to be staring down as a faster Rock Slide. Just from the sheer fact that odds are one of your Pokemon are probably going to get flinched if you get double hit by that Rock Slide. So that in itself makes it a, a pretty powerful asset. Um, he did put on Dragon Pulse instead of... Um, you know, like a Hydro Pump or some other option for a couple reasons. One, with a Choice Scarf Salamence, this way he could stay in longer, especially late game when, you know, he's only got two guys left. You don't want to be locked into Draco Meteor where you're, you know, losing your special attack like mad. So I gave him an option to stay in and just hit consistently and hard with. And also, it was his only 100% accurate move. Otherwise, he would have had nothing with 100% accuracy. And there are some moments where you're just like, well, as long as I hit, I win. No reason to throw that to the wind without having, you know, something 100% accurate. Um, it's He put on max speed because Scarf Salamence is a very common choice. Now, I know Ray's, if you watch my, um, Ray Rizzo, if you watch the Virginia top, he won, Ray won. So if you watch my other team analysis on Ray's team from Virginia, his Salamence was Timid Scarf. So that is something to watch out for. You might get outsped by... Um, the timid salamences or who are out there to either speed tie other choice scarf timid salamence or to beat modest ones like this but very very good support in the fact that you can come in and intimidate and threaten ko's with a really strong stab dragon move um tyranitar like i said not a lot of people were running special tyranitar at the time both ray and wolfie i guess ended up running special tyranitar um, the difference here is that Wolfie opted for Ice Beam instead of uh, a Rock move, which he does go on to say that he regretted a little bit later. Um, this Tyranitar build lives a minus one Mega Mawile play rough, so with that Intimidate support from Salamence, you guarantee your you know you live as long as you're at 100%. You also guarantee a live from Charizard Wise Solar Beam. That's really important too because Charizard's everywhere, especially because he doesn't have a way to deal with it very well. Um, on this set, he's gonna have to like Dark Pulse it. Uh, modest and special in order to avoid all the intimidate that was running around and is still running around um he didn't have a rock move there because he liked the coverage that dark pulse ice beam and flamethrower gave him however you know like he says he, he goes on to say he regretted this decision later because he did run into a lot of charizard and talon flame this also left his team without any physical attackers so when he went and faced uh, Assault Vest Ludicolo in Top Cut, the guy lost to that same guy. That's why I know it's Assault Vest. Um, he wasn't able to punch enough, you know, he wasn't able to punch a big enough hole into it to get rid of it because all of his stuff was just special. So, Weakness Policy Tyranitar, pretty strong. 
um, something to look out for, especially if it's special like this, because that coverage is really amazing. Um, that should not say Garchomp. That should say Lucario. And this is Omega Lucario. I'm sorry, there's someone outside my window. I'm just making sure everything's okay. Um, that's not a Garchomp. That's a Lucario. And um, it's holding... So this is his Mega Choice. That's a very interesting Mega Choice. A lot of people opt for Mawile, opt for Kangaskhan, opt for Charizard. You don't see a lot of Lucario. In fact, out of the two regionals I've been to, I haven't seen any Mega Lucario. So it is something to uh, think of. Um, the way Lucario came about, he had a core of Vaporeon, Amoongus, and Salamence. So that was his original core. Um, he found it to be a little bit weak to rock moves and uh, Kangaskhan in general. So he was trying to play around with what could be Kangaskhan and not take super effective from rock and can hit back hard. And uh, he kind of put Lucario on as a joke, but it ended up really working for him. Inner focus, you don't get faked out. That's amazing. Um, at plus two, because it's running Nasty Plot, as you can see on the left, you're able to one-shot Garchomp, Rotom Wash, Meow Stick, and a lot of other Pokemon, like common Pokemon in the metagame. And it's mad wicked fast. So if you're able to get that plus two up, you're going to be just one-shotting stuff left and right. Rage Powder, Fake Out, and Intimidate. So he had Amoongus. Mr. Mime had Fake Out, Intimidate from Salamence. All great support to help him get set up because, you know, set up in VGC is really hard to do um, without support because it's just you'll get picked off. But with, with you know, redirection and faking him out and stuff, it allowed Lucario to get that plus two up that he needed to from Nasty Plot in order to get these one shots. Um, this set actually outspeeds regular Gengar, Scarf, Machamp, and Garchomp. Um, which I said you can one-shot Garchomp back, so that's pretty massive. And it also, Jolly Garchomp can't one-shot with Earthquake with these uh, defense EVs. So, that's pretty awesome. Great coverage in Aura Sphere and Flash Cannon. He said he'd never missed having Vacuum Wave except for against Mega Ma not Mega Ma Mega Manectric. Mega Man, as we deem it. So, um, but otherwise, he really preferred the Aura Sphere because it gave him a lot of one-shots that vacuum wave or whatever the hell the thing is called didn't oh. uh vaporeon oh god this vaporeon okay so i included two sets here because he did go and he changed it after the regional for a different for the next regional he went to florida and he liked the second set better and i would probably recommend the second set over the first set if you don't know what celebrate does it was it was a move they gave away at the Pokemon Center, and literally it drops a present down, and it opens up, and it says, congratulations, and then, like, your player name or whatever. It doesn't do any damage. It was just, like, a promotional attack. And so, <laughs> Wolfie, you gotta, I gotta preface this with that. Wolfie really, he used the timer in 2012 to his advantage a lot. He had a Resto Chesto hit on top, something you never saw anywhere. Um, cause he really, he knew that the timer was going to be a big deal and he could wait to the last second and rest up and win on time and stuff like that. And so he, we got nerfed on our timer. We got down to 15 minutes instead of 20 and it's only 45 second turns now. Um, which instead of a minute means the game's going to go a little bit faster, but or a little bit, it's going to take longer to get through just a little bit, but still with all the animation and stuff, 15 minutes is not a lot of time. And I definitely have had games go to time. So his goal here was to uh, really stall as long as possible. Um, this set does is a three-hit KO from a Life Orb Talonflame Brave Bird, so it can take two and be fine. That's nuts. Um, celebrate, like I said, was to waste time. He also had Sleep Talk on there with Rest so that he could Sleep Talk, Celebrate, and waste even more time because you got to go through the Sleep Talk animation then the Celebrate animation. Um and then he switched to the Protect, Wish, Scald, Helping Hand set. Gave him a lot of one-hit, you know, one-shots with Helping Hand on his sweepers that um, the opponent wasn't expecting. And he said that worked out really well for him. I definitely recommend the second set, um, unless you just want to troll and go for Celebrate Sleep Talk. But, oh my god, I can't believe he top cut with that. That's pretty nuts. Mr. Mime! This thing is so cool. Um... In the tournament, this was Wolfie's MVP, so he says. He didn't lose a single game he brought it to. That's pretty nuts. And, like, nobody really saw Mr. Mime coming. Honestly, I didn't even know it was legal in the Kalos decks, to be honest. Um, he put on safety goggles and Psy Shock to help beat Amoongus. Um, that was um, a, a recommendation from a friend of his and Fuego's. And um, I, it apparently worked out really well for him. When he was running Mr. Mime, he didn't bring it a lot. He thought it was going to be just like a wasted space on his team. But as soon as he got to the regional, like he ended up, it ended up just being really clutch. 
It had Icy Wind, which dealt damage, like really good damage against the common double dragon lead, Garchomp Salamence. So you'll see that lead a lot. That and Charizard Venusaur are probably the two most common leads. So it gave him a really good option to deal with those and to slow him down because he outspeeds Garchomp after one Icy Wind because Icy Wind lowers your speed. Speed Control, it was big in every metagame except for this one just because we don't have a lot of options to do Speed Control with. Um, it lives a Jolly Mega Kangaskhan's Return and it lives a Timid Mega Gengar Sludge Bomb. So those, it's got some life to it. Um, Wide Guard, he said he didn't really get to use it as much as he had wanted to, but he, he kind of attributed that to him being inexperienced using it on Mr. Mime. Um, fake out there for that support on Lucario and Psy Shock just for a st strong psychic move because 100 base special attacks nothing to like laugh at like that does pretty decent damage um, definitely a wild card definitely worked out for him I think it's really cool I really applaud him for running Mr. Mime Vaporeon like, that, that stuff's really cool and then Amoongus um, quoted by Wolfie as being one of the most useful supporting Pokemon thus far this year he ran Lumberry on it, which he says may seem a little redundant, but it was there to counter Lux strategies, which is like Dark Void Smurgle, Klefki, who's out there trying to Thunder Wave, Swagger, everything. So the Lumberry got it out of that, even though he can't get Spore. That's why he ran it there anyway. Um, pretty standard set on the Amoongus itself, but that, I mean, it, it does what it's supposed to do. It pulled away moves from Lucario and let it set up, and it also could Spore if you needed it. So pretty good option, um, great support. And I just think it's really cool that he is able to get so far with such, you know, kind of unknown Pokemon. Especially, like, Amoongus got really big after this regional happened. I didn't see any Amoongus. Well, I, I saw a couple Amoongus in that tournament, but I didn't see any on, you know, playtesting. I just thought, I just thought, like, maybe it's not the play anymore. But it really got a big revive after that regional. I know Enfuego also ran it next to a Swords Dance Scissors. So if you're trying to set up, Amoongus is a pretty good option just because it takes hits so well. And like I said, guys, Eggy Emporium is where I got the information from. He hits Wolfie's blog. He updates a lot. So it's pretty got some pretty good information. I think what you really want to take away from this is that running stuff that you don't see a lot does have a lot of potential. I know I have a video coming out. It's called um, Project Ingenuity. It's like I, I record stuff that like has interesting strategies and they work. And so when you're playing against something that you don't know what it's going to do in such a prediction-based game, that can really turn the tide in your favor. So um, I just think it's it's a great way to promote the fact that creativity can really pay off. It can suck sometimes, don't get me wrong, but it can also really pay off. And uh, that's what I'm going to leave you with, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, all that information is there for you guys. If you guys want to paste it, you want to try out any of the sets, go ahead and uh, good luck.